Are you ready for college success? How to beat the odds. As you listen to this discussion about success factors, apply the ideas to yourself and try to answer the question for yourself. Self-knowledge can be very powerful. We'll look first at the factors that lead to success and then at the remedies for those you may not have. Although there are many, let's look at three important factors that might put a student at high risk for failure in college according to recent research. They are basic skills in reading, English, and math, study skills, and motivation. First, the basic skills of reading, writing, and math must be at college level for success. This is assessed by the ACT, ASSET, or COMPASS. If those test scores show less than college level proficiency, then a second confirmation test is given to be sure. In reading, the COMPASS diagnostic was given. If you are in this class, you have taken two tests that indicate your reading skills need to be improved so you will have the best chance of successfully achieving your educational and career goals. A second factor of high risk is study skills and habits. Even students whose reading, writing, and math skills are proficient are likely to fail if they don't know and or practice effective study skills. One of these habits is good attendance. Research is very clear that the single most accurate predictor of success in college is good attendance. About 50% of our students fail the reading course. Most of those failures are directly caused by poor attendance. Missing classes causes late penalties for assignments and sometimes zeros for assignments that can't be made up. Getting the notes from someone else is not as effective at taking them for yourself. Another critical study skill is time management. First-time college students are often overwhelmed with the amount of material that must be learned and the number of assignments that must be completed in just 14 weeks in college. As a general rule, it takes two hours of work outside of class for every hour in class. So if you're taking four classes, that's 12 hours per week in class and should be 24 hours per week of study outside of class. In a five-day period, that's about five hours a day. Add to that challenge the fact that most students work either part-time or full-time and others have family responsibilities. Another big challenge for time management is that all reading, writing, and math developmental classes have been redesigned in such a way that more student involvement and work outside of class is required. Finding the time to study can be daunting. You will be required to spend one to two hours per week in the learning commons in addition to the time you spend in class for this reading class. This is to help you form the habit of studying outside of class regularly. A third factor is the ability to focus. Technology competes for students' focus of attention. Incoming and outgoing calls and text messages on cell phones are constant distractions in class and out. Listening to music on iPods is distracting. Surfing the net for sports scores and the latest developments on Facebook and MySpace may vie for your attention frequently. As a student, you will have to commit to put entertainment aside and make room for learning. It doesn't mean that you can't ever look at it again. It just means you need to develop the ability to separate entertainment activity from study activity. Finally, getting assignments in on time is very important in college. Most instructors penalize late assignments by one letter grade for each day late. Additionally, students who have some sort of learning challenge such as dyslexia, ADD, or ADHD must be even more diligent in developing those good study skills and habits. One last factor is learning styles can be a challenge for some students. For example, many college classes are lecture dependent. So if a student doesn't learn well through listening, success may be more difficult. The third factor of high risk is motivation. Research has shown that students who have clear ideas about what they want to be when they grow up are much more motivated 
and ultimately more successful than students who don't have clear career goals. Students who know what courses they must take to get that degree that leads to that desired job are more successful than those who just take whatever. Students who set learning goals for success in each class are more successful than those who just show up to see what happens. Locus of control is a psychological concept that has to do with how a person perceives who is in control of one's life and is either internal or external. A person who believes that success in life is dependent on luck, fate, or what other people do has an external locus of control. Conversely, a person who believes he or she is responsible for his or her own success and takes responsibility for it has an ec internal locus of control. These people tend to be more successful than those who have an external locus of control. So what is the remedy for these factors? The news is good. Let's take the reading skills first. The reading courses are organized into five modules that teach strategies for reading literature for college and life, textbook reading, essay reading, vocabulary development for college and life, and fluency training. The work you do in this class will prepare you for your college classes, your work and career needs, and to be a lifelong learner. Recent research is showing that the language skills needed for work are the same as the ones needed for college. You will take a diagnostic test that will place you at your starting level for vocabulary development and textbook reading skills. You will also learn 25 strategies that good readers use that, if practiced, will help you to enjoy reading. There is also a great remedy for building study skills. Pellissippi offers a course called College 1500, College Success. In that course, students delve deeply into the skills we have mentioned, plus many others. If you are not taking that class, I encourage you to consider it. For this reading class, you will gather information about your learning styles, analyze your time usage, and make a plan for carving out study time. Finally, Pellissippi has a program for students who have learning challenges, such as dyslexia or ADD. If you have an accommodation plan, be sure to give it to your instructor and talk to him or her about it. If you have not pursued this support, talk to your instructor about concerns you have about learning challenges. Finally, you will have many opportunities in class to connect with your classmates. Research shows that students who know and interact with other students and their instructors tend to stay in college and reach their goals. What is the remedy for motivation? Clarify your goals, of course. You will do a lot of work on that in the College Success course, but even if you don't take that course, you can research possible careers through the Student Assistance Center. Counselors are there to guide you. This is a crossroads in your life where you should be asking some big questions of yourself. What do I want to be when I grow up? What is my passion? Can I pursue that passion in a career that doesn't seem like work? What courses am I going to have to take to get that great job I want? How fast can I get them completed? How will this course help me to reach my goals? What are my goals for improving my own reading skills? Am I in charge of my own success or am I looking for someone else for my success? Will you beat the odds? Remember that about 50% of the students in the developmental program and in this course are not successful. Who does pass the course? Here is the rocket science. Those who attend class. If you are in class and attentive every day, you will learn. You will know what's going on. You will connect with, be supported by, and be a support to your classmates. You will connect with your instructor. These are all success factors. Those who read the books. You cannot pass the course if you don't read. That may be the real challenge for some of you, for you have become very adept at avoiding reading. It may have worked in high school, but it won't work in college. 
Make a commitment to do it. Those who complete and turn in on time the assignments associated with the books. College instructors are very serious about assignments. If you don't do them, you get a zero, and it takes only a few of those to drop you into a hole too deep to climb out. Those who do the computer work in class and finish outside class is needed. I have literally had students fail the class because they surf the internet instead of doing their computer assignments. So have you been able to answer the initial question? Are you ready for success in college? Have you determined which of the risk factors might apply to you? You know the remedies. Now continue with the activities to learn more about yourself as a learner. I think you will feel really good about what you learn about yourself and will feel more confident as a learner.